So this past summer, I decided to try something new and start scaling up my PC flipping business. I've been flipping PCs for over five years and made my original PC flipping guide just over two years ago. But after flipping 48 PCs and making over $7,500 in just 10 weeks, there is so much that I missed out in my original guide. This video is going to cover everything you need to know to get started flipping PCs, whether you just want to sell a few or you want to run a full scale business. Now, if you've never flipped a PC before, you probably have some questions before you get started. For me personally, what I found to be the most beneficial from running a PC flipping business was running a business. Obviously, it was great to do something that I enjoy and earn money at the same time, but I got experience in accounting, marketing, and customer service. Speaking of earning money, I also made more than twice the amount per hour than if I worked a regular minimum wage job. You do need to know things like relative performance between parts, how to build PCs with different types of components, ways to market your PCs, and customer service related things. And like any other type of flipping, there's also a risk of low demand or market fluctuation. Your PCs will really only decrease in value over time, so if you're in an area with low demand or you're just having trouble finding a buyer, you'll end up losing out on some or all of the profits. To actually flip a PC, it really only takes five steps. Find the parts, build a PC, test it, market it, and sell it. But before that, you should check if there's actually any demand in your area. One way I like to do this is to check recently sold listings on a site like Facebook Marketplace to see the levels of demand. Okay, let's talk about finding parts. There's really only two rules to run by. Buy parts below market price and don't buy old parts. I find parts on sites like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, but you might also have success on sites like OfferUp, Mercari, Jawa, Gumtree, or your local classifieds. Look for deals that are at least 10% below the average price on eBay, and unless it's some crazy deal that'll get snagged up immediately, try to negotiate for a lower price. Obviously, don't be disrespectful by lowballing, but $10 to $20 saved on a few parts can end up being an extra $50, $100 in profit. Okay, here are the best places to find every single PC part. For CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, and RAM, the best place to find them is on the local market. For low-end PCs, nothing older than 7 years old, and 16 gigabytes of RAM minimum. For mid-range and high-end, nothing older than five years, and 32 gigabytes of RAM minimum. For CPU coolers, Thermalright has just flooded the market with so many high-quality, low-cost air and liquid coolers on Amazon. Most of them already come with RGB fans, but in case you need some for the case or you need some extras, Thermalright also sells a pack of three 120 millimeter RGB case fans for around 10 to $15. I probably bought close to 10 of the Thermalright Assassin Spirits this summer for around $25 each and don't really have anything bad to say. They're not too noisy, installation is easy, and it comes with an ARGB fan too. For power supplies, you can find them locally or you can find a seller on eBay and buy in bulk. Make sure to contact the seller directly and include how many you want to buy and see if they can give you a lower price than what's on the eBay listing. You can use the PSU tier list to make sure that you're getting good quality power supplies, which I'll link in the description below. And if you're really in a pinch, you can't find any locally, you can also use the tier list and PC part picker to find something on Amazon. For lower end PCs, I include a 500 gigabyte SSD and a Wi-Fi 5 card. And for mid range to high end PCs, I include a one terabyte SSD with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. You can find both new on Amazon. Just make sure that the Wi-Fi card is PCIe and not USB. For cases, you can also find them locally, or you can go on PC Part Picker and filter cases that are under your budget. I'd also recommend checking Newegg as well, since some of their listings don't show up on PC Part Picker. When you're choosing a case, remember that looks matter a lot. Most buyers are gamers, and most buyers want a good-looking system, understandably. RGB is pretty much always preferable compared to non-RGB systems. So when I made my original PC flipping video, I was only selling PCs in the $300 to $400 range, and that's what I recommended you guys do too. This time though, I switched it up and started selling PCs ranging from $300 all the way up to $2,000, and it's safe to say that $300 to $400 PCs are not the best to flip. The benefit of selling low-end PCs is that there's a lot of demand. There's really no shortage of people on a budget looking to play games, students, kids, etc. The total cost of parts is pretty low, but the profit margins and the total dollar amount of profit is also low. High-end PCs, on the other hand, have slightly less demand and require a lot of capital per PC, but the dollar amount you earn is pretty high. That's why most people will find success flipping PCs in the mid-range. There's a pretty high demand for them, 
and the profit margins tend to be the highest, so I really recommend trying to mainly focus on flipping PCs in this price range. But this also assumes that you're in an area with a good amount of demand. Generally, if you live near a somewhat large city, you don't have to worry too much. But again, if you want to see what the market is like in your area, you can check recently sold listings on Facebook Marketplace. Once you've bought your parts, to help you keep track of the parts that you buy, I've made a PC part tracking template that I use that you can make a copy of from the link in the description. The first page is to keep track of newly bought parts, and the following pages are for PCs that are in progress, ready to be built, listed, or sold. This will help you see your profit margins, your total profit, and general trends in the PCs that you sell. When you're finally ready to build the PC, clean and repaste the GPU, and if the case and cooler are used, clean those as well with an air duster or some tissues. It's in your best interest to make the parts look nice. No one wants to buy a PC that's covered in dust or grime. Test the PC outside the case before building it, and don't forget cable management. It doesn't need to be perfect, but try to do the best that you can with zip ties and velcro strips. Once you've got the PC up and running, make sure to update to the latest BIOS for your motherboard and change a few BIOS settings. Turn on XMP, DOCP, or Expo, whatever it's called, to make sure that your RAM is running at its rated speed, if the system is stable with it on. Turn off CSM support, enable and activate secure boot, and make sure that firmware TPM is on as well. After booting into Windows and installing the graphics drivers, it's time to test the PC and make sure that we can actually sell it. Here are the programs that I use. For GPU testing, I use 3 Mark Time Spy, which you can get on Steam for a few dollars. 3 Mark monitors the CPU and GPU temperatures during the test, so I check those to make sure nothing is overheating. For CPU testing, I run Cinebench R23 and Hardware Info to monitor CPU temperatures. This is pretty straightforward, and I just look at how the temperatures look after about 5-7 to seven minutes. For SSDs, Crystal Disk Info shows the drive health as well as the total amount of data written. You can compare that to the manufacturer's TBW, or terabytes written, on the SSD Info page, which will tell you the amount of written data the drive can handle in its lifetime. Obviously, this is more important for used drives, but you can also check if an SSD advertised as new is actually new or not. And now that we're done with testing, it's time to list the PC. Take at least two pictures in good lighting, one with a side panel on and one with it off. You're free to include more pictures of the interior as well. Price-wise, it often comes down to what other similarly spec PCs are selling for in your area. I generally charge a little more, but I'm a reputable seller. I offer free lifetime tech support and upgrade support, and my PCs have been cleaned and refurbished. Start your description with a blurb and really try to keep it short. I guarantee you that most customers won't even read it. Make sure to include the fullest of parts, what you offer to the buyer, and what forms of payment you take. I personally only take cash or Zelle because once the money is in my hands or in my bank account, it's final. Things like Cash App and Venmo can be reversed through credit cards and it'll be a headache to deal with customer support. If you have potential buyers, make sure you're responding to them professionally. You're running a business, and people leaving reviews on your Facebook seller page, for example, is a great way to build credibility for future buyers. Here's some common things that customers might ask about. Do you offer a warranty? I have a policy where if the buyer has any issues with the PC when they first get it, I'm happy to give them a full refund. Anything beyond that, I can provide tech support, but I don't offer full refunds. It's up to you how long you want to offer a warranty for, and you can even give buyers the option to add on a warranty for some price. Can I see the PC working? In the description of all my listings, I say that I'm happy to provide a video of the PC working or running games and benchmarks. And that's pretty much all you need to do here. I send them a video of the PC booting up, and if they ask for some games, you can either test them yourself or send them a YouTube video of a benchmark with similar specs. Are you selling any peripherals? Unless I get them as part of a bundle deal, I never buy peripherals to sell. You'd have to keep a pretty large stock of mice, keyboards, and monitors to account for different buyer preferences. Sometimes if they ask, I include an extra keyboard or mouse that I have laying around, but otherwise, it's not worth buying individual peripherals. Do you ship? Some people are open to shipping PCs. I am personally not one of them. You need to pay for packing materials, shipping, transaction fees, damaged parts, and online transactions just tend to have a higher chance of being scammed as a seller. If you're really set on flipping PCs and your local market just isn't great, Facebook Marketplace does have a shipping option available. Once you have a buyer, a meetup location, and a time, you can start reinstalling Windows. You can leave it unactivated, buy an OEM key online, or you can use a KMS server. A KMS server is free and completely safe to use. Check the link in the description for a full guide. When you actually meet the buyer in person, make sure to bring the Wi-Fi antenna and the power cable and answer any last minute questions they have. Confirm that you received the correct amount of money and thank the buyer. 
Here are some clips of my interactions with buyers. So you just, uh, you, how long ago did you, you built this one? Yeah, yeah, so what I do is I buy used parts, oh, okay. I refurbish them so I check that they're all in good working order, oh, okay. and then I rebuild PCs out of them. Right yeah. on, right on. Yeah, it's my first PC, so. Yeah, yeah, I hope you enjoy it, man. Like, uh, you said you were planning to play. Uh, uh, I just play Fortnite, but I've been needing something for like uh, work for stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I feel you. I, I pretty much I'm just I'm, I play a little bit of Fortnite, a little bit of Call of Duty, but that's about it. But if I could do that on here too. Yeah, I mean, of course you could definitely do it on yeah, this. So. Of course, yeah. yeah if you guys have any issues at all, okay. let me know. I'll be happy to help. Yeah. If it really doesn't work, okay, I'll give you a full refund. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank good. you so much. That's good. Yeah. So this is the PC. Yeah. Here's the power cable. A really common issue when the buyer first gets the PC is the PC is on, but I'm not getting any display. Ask them to send a picture of the back of the PC and more often than not, the display cable is plugged into the motherboard instead of the GPU. Pretty simple fix, but it's a pretty common issue. Finally, when you're flipping PCs, you'll probably end up with a bunch of packaging and boxes. If you've got a ton of stuff that won't all fit in your trash and recycling, find a local waste disposal company or a transfer station that you can drop off your boxes and packaging at. I found a place around 30 minutes from my house and ended up paying around $10 to remove around 100 pounds of waste. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can join my Discord from the link in the description and ask me questions there. Hope you enjoy PC flipping as much as I do.